Hey everyone, welcome back to Tarot Talks. It's been about a week since I was able to post a video because my work schedule and my job is actually bananas and I come home completely exhausted. So this is my first day off and um, so that's why there's been a delay, but I wanna just jump right in. Um, this video is gonna be separate, the numerology of nine, because there's so much uh, detail that goes into the number nine and then the rest of the nine cards will have their own video, okay? So numerology nine. Nine is a magical number. It is completely set apart from the rest of its predecessors. When you multiply any number by nine and add the digits that remain, you get nine. This is the only number that does that, okay? Also, when you add any number to nine and then add the resulting digits together, the number that you added to nine comes back to itself. Okay, so there's like a magical process that's going on with number nine that's very different than the rest of the numbers, okay? Um, there's also a correlation between nine and zero. If you um, do any of those processes that I just mentioned with zero, you'll get the same result, okay? So nine and zero are equal to each other. No one will ever tell you this. I've never learned this. I've never seen this. I've learned... Um, you know, to count on your fingers and all the tricks you could do with nine when you learn math in school and you know that it's like a cool number that does something different. But it does something different because it's actually the God number. It's also in numerology, they tell you it's the highest spiritual number. And in numerology and in tarot, the nine is the hermit. Okay. Now, let me just um, show this to you really quick. I made a little picture about. How, how nine and zero are equal, okay? If you take a big number, okay, three, seven, eight, one, four, five, one, four, and you take out all the digits that equal nine, okay? So we have, we took out the eight and the one and the four and the five, and then we add three plus seven plus one plus four. You get six, okay? So if you keep all those numbers in there that equate to nine and add them together, you're still gonna get six, so this is three plus seven plus eight plus one plus four plus five plus one plus four. So nine in that case is like zero. You could take it out, you can completely disregard it and you'll still get the same numbers, okay? It's a really kind of cool concept. Um, I saw it in my internet travels. I've only seen it in one video and I thought it was fantastic. It also led me to look into the 369 Nikola Tesla and when I started studying that you guys my brain was blown open my consciousness was blown open I started to have these crazy vivid dreams I had a dream that I was like an indigenous person can't figure out what region it was from but my skin was brown I had a witch stone that had a hole in it and I was looking up at the star Sirius and in my dream I had the knowing that there was um energy from a star coming through a star now in my when i studied that i learned that sirius is our sun's higher version of its own spirit so it is a um it's like a god sun like our sun is our god here on earth in space sirius is its own sun and it's like our god's higher god okay and they say that the energy from Sirius is filtered through to our sun and if you sun gaze you can re retain and uh, absorb information spiritual information now every once or twice a month I go into my sunroom and I watch the sunrise and I stare at the sun now you can sun gaze in the morning when the sun is rising or when the sun is setting this is in the first hour of rising in the last hour of setting so you don't hurt your eyes but you can actually look at the sun when I tell you your consciousness will never be the same. So in um, traditional witchcraft and occult and things like that, people really, really um, use the moon in magic, but you have to remember that the moon is just a reflection of the sun's light. So you're only gonna get a certain amount of juju juice, okay? If you work with the sun, you're working directly with the highest motherfucker that you can work with on this planet. And then the next one's probably gonna be serious if you wanna get real, real highly elevated. All right, so there's a reason why his robe is gray, okay? So if we're talking about nine and zero on the bookends, we're gonna go into alchemy a little bit. So if you look at a thermometer, right in the middle is where um, 
hot starts to become cold or cold starts to become hot and they kind of sort of blend with each other. Um, if you maintain that middle point, you become gray. It's a mixture of dark and light, white and black. You become gray. He is in the middle. He is completely centered and completely balanced. He's done, he's isolated himself as the hermit to do that inner work. And now he wants to bring his star. If you look inside the lantern really close, it's a star. Okay. And it's this, it's a, um, it is the star of David, which is the male and the female together. And, um, we have the mother energy. Okay. This is ruled by Virgo, the virgin. And this is where I told you guys in the previous videos, I get that notion that God is a woman. So let me just go back to my notes really quick. Cause I don't want to miss anything. So this means that nine and zero are everything and nothing at the same at the same time. It means that the beginning and the end are the same as death and birth are entered through the same door. This is why nine is the ultimate number of the spirit. It is the God number. Zero and nine are different degrees of the same thing. Just like a thermometer, hot is just a lesser degree of cold and cold is a lesser degree of hot. Okay, and when you get to the midpoint, you're in complete balance. And it's the same thing if you read the Kabbalion, which is a really easy read and it's a really good book. It's going to um, give you like the basic essences of alchemy and how the, how the universe works. They tell you that fear and love, just like that from thermometer, are all the same. It's the same entity. It's two sides of the same entity. It's all the same and Fear is a lesser degree of love and love is, is a lesser degree of, it's like love is when you have less, less fear. Okay. Lesser degrees of fear. And then when you're in a state of fear, you have lesser degrees of love in your being. So hopefully I, I have explained that to where you can understand. They're not separate from each other. It's all, it's all one entity. Just like they, just like the lover's card is, um, the to the male and female in one spirit. We have that, th going back to that 369 essence, if you look into Tesla's 369, you're gonna get a portal. You're gonna get a triangle. Nine at the top, um, six at the bottom right, and three at the bottom left, okay? Th th these all embody the mother energy, and we're going back to Virgo, whereas nine is the highest elevation of spirit, and the hermit, as the teacher and the master alchemist shares his light with the entire world, okay? The three is the pregnant empress. She shares her light and her mother energy and love with her child. And then um, the, the then you have that parental unit of six, which is that, that Gemini male and female that also share their um, their love and their, their caring and their compassion with close people of their family, but the hermit shares it with the world. Okay. I'm just going over my notes here again. This is so detailed. I really don't want to miss anything. Okay. Okay. So this is where, um, we go into the, the planetary rulerships and esoterically what it's trying to tell you. It's trying to tell you that, for me, I really feel like that creator essence, our God, is a woman because you have that nine and zero, which is everything and nothing. Zero is the void, the black void, how black embodies every color of the, the spectrum. Um, she does not need the male to, to give her sperm or to give her light or energy because she contains that in herself. That's why you have the virgin mother. She doesn't need to have sex. She just creates, she shoots it out. And then her first creation is always a son. So she can, he can be a co-creator. She then creates with him and then they go, all of their lesser creations go on to have that duality and create with each other. That's why God is the oneness and it embodies both male and female. It can create without us being like, see how like I'm a woman, I'm separate, I need a male to to actually have a procreation. God doesn't need that. And this goes deeper in, into where like the black Madonnas of all the revered cathedrals of the church, this is why they say that God is a black woman. It's not a person, it is the color black, the void um, that contains everything and nothing at the same time. Okay, so that was everything for number nine. I'm going to go into the nines and I will see you soon.